King, K I N G. On July 1st, 1992, God gave Kelly and me the gift of Chelsea. We almost lost her during pregnancy, but she came through born healthy and very, very happy. From her earliest days, she had a joy and a zest for life few of, few of us have ever known. Chelsea and I were extremely close. I loved feeding her, playing with her, changing her diapers, just seeing her dad. I would sing to her. I remember one of her favorites was patterned after the Band-Aid commercial. I would sing, I am stuck on Chelsea, like Chelsea's stuck on me. And she would respond back, I am stuck on Daddy, like Daddy's stuck on me. And then we, then we would both just hug and laugh. Chelsea had a great sense of humor. She was extremely smart, a great writer, and a diligent student. We raised Chelsea to embrace life's joys, believe in the good, and always give her best effort. We talked and joked around all the time. We talked about how to handle life's pressures, about competition, about people, global issues, and her dreams. We spoke about the power of words, critical thinking, the beauty of nature, and the wonderment of why God designed the different plants, animals, and birds. We both laughed about his sense of humor in creating the platypus. We both agreed that a tree, which by its very nature gives us more than it takes, was a perfect creation. Chelsea knew who she was. She was comfortable with herself. She was self-assured enough to be goofy in public with her friends. She loved to give a smile to change your mood and invite you to smile back. If you read her writings, you would be amazed by the maturity of her thinking and the wisdom of someone so young. She played volleyball, the French horn, and all games with passion, focus, and balance. <coughs> she had limitless energy and always pushed herself to give her best. She made those around her better. We are so proud of her acceptance to all 11 colleges which she applied. You have no idea how bittersweet the receipt of each admission letter was, knowing Chelsea had been denied the prize for all of her hard work and dedication. Chelsea looked for the good in others. I am not sure she would have been able to comprehend the example of pure evil that sits before us today. Chelsea was everything this man was not. She was as good as he is evil. I am so proud of who she had become. The world does not realize it lost one of its best most promising young adults when Chelsea was ruthlessly taken from us. But I do. My family does. Chelsea's friends do. The world is not as good without Chelsea in it. I miss her terribly. I am not sure how Kelly, Tyler, and I are going to recover from her loss. I hope everyone but this confessed murderer and rapist understands that what I'm about to say comes from a place of hurt, anguish, and pain that is very raw and incredibly deep. My bright, beautiful daughter Chelsea was with us less than three months ago, ready to finish her senior year, embark on the adventure of college, and live a life of promise and purpose. I am filled with a rage I did not realize I could possess against this man. I hate him with all my soul for what he did to Chelsea, what he did to Kelly and Tyler, what he did to my family, and what he did to me. John, since I learned of your arrest for Chelsea's murder, I refuse to speak your name. I have called you monster, sociopath, serial killer, animal. You are all of those things. In my view until today, you did not deserve a name because your acts were not human. But as I thought about what I was gonna to say today, I realize that names like monster and animal, in a perverse way, let you off the hook. You know what you were doing when you chose to corner Chelsea. You could have prevented yourself from committing this crime. You had plenty of lucid moments after you viciously beat a 13-year-old girl 10 years ago. You knew who you were and what you were capable of, but you did nothing to prevent a repeat of that crime, and much, much worse. You had many lucid moments after you abducted and killed Amber. But you did not turn yourself in. Instead, you indulged your evil thoughts. Satisfying, choosing to satisfy your rage 
rather than having the courage to admit what you had done and suffer the consequences. The most fitting name for you is coward. You are not a man. You are just a weak, pathetic coward who preys on unsuspecting young girls half your size. You are you're evil, not because of some sickness or disease. So don't blame anything or anyone for your crime. You intentionally chose evil, and now you have to live with that evil festering inside you and eating you up as you rot in a prison cell for the rest of your life. Kelly and I wanted the death penalty for you. You do not deserve to live another day on this earth after what you have done. But you live in a state where the death penalty remains an empty promise. You live in a state where a twice convicted child rapist and murderer like yourself is safer on death row than in any other part of the prison system. If there is a silver lining to the deal you struck to avoid the death penalty, it will be that you will be much less safe now than if you had gotten death. I know you think that your time in prison will be hell on earth. I hope you're right. I hope that you spend every waking moment looking over your shoulder in fear of the murderer who is going to end your life. I know that for the rest of your life, you'll be forced to sleep with one eye open in fear of losing it to your cellmate. I want you to feel every day, every moment, that same fear Chelsea must have felt when you surprised her out of breath, vulnerable, in the middle of her run. I want you to feel every day the same pain you inflicted on my daughter. That would be justice. Unlike you, Chelsea was no coward. I can assure you she showed more courage in her last moments than you showed in your entire life. Look around at these cameras if you can. I want the world to see your face one more time. This is the face of a coward. If you choose to speak today in this hearing, I want the world to again hear your voice. I want your future prison mates to see the face and hear the voice of a coward. And they know, they know a sniveling coward is on their way to them. I'm sure they can't wait to get their hands on you. <laughs> Chelsea loved the classics, and she was an especially big fan of Virgil. In Dante's Inferno, Virgil takes Dante through the many circles of hell. Dante, in his description of hell, stuck murderers in the seventh circle of hell. This is where you will go, standing up to your eyebrows for eternity in a boiling river of blood. As certain as I am of Chelsea's goodness, I am certain that you will not have a peace. You will not have peace in the next life. You will go from the hell of prison on earth to the real hell. You should fear death. You should fear hell far more than living the rest of your life among convicted murderers that are going to torment you. You do not deserve a peaceful moment on this earth or in the next life for what you've chosen to do. You are not the only one I blame for what you did to Chelsea. I also blame your parents. I blame your father for being absent in your life. Your mother, Kathy Osborne, knew that you were capable of and did nothing to protect you, protect us from you. She knew who you were after you violently beat and tried to rape that poor 13-year-old 10, 10 years ago. She certainly knew after Amber went missing that you were capable of the crime and yet did nothing. She knew where Amber was last seen. A year later, she heard the helicopter circling in the park, calling my daughter's name. She read the papers. She knew. There was plenty she could have done. She did not even take the most basic step to ensure that you were registered at her address or inform the police that you were living in her home when Chelsea went missing. She harbored you, she indulged you, and put every child in our community at risk. As a psychiatric nurse, she of all people cannot claim ignorance that she did not understand what you had done to earn your first stay in prison or what you were capable of after your release. Ms. Osborne, do you have Chelsea's rape and murder and our pain on your soul? I am not sure where Dante will put you. I leave that to God. But you have much to account for as a mother and a member of our community. The pain my family is suffering has only been made worse as a thirst for ratings by a particular media organization caused them to choose profits over basic humanity. I am not so naive as to think that at some point someone in the media would not interview the defendant. But the manner in which CBS promoted and presented the disgusting banter between its reporter and this admitted serial killer, giving the coward a platform to spread his lies and foster discontent, did not serve the public and exacerbated our pain. 
when profit becomes the primary motive for the media, it is no longer journalism. It is sensationalism at a terrible cost to the victim's family, friends, and community. As I said after the plea agreement, today brings me no satisfaction. I want justice for Chelsea, but, but justice has been stymied. I am not alone in my frustration with a justice system that does not immediately put to death a coward who admits there can be no, this, me, who admits so that there can be no doubt to these brutal crimes. I am not alone in my frustration with a justice system that 10 years ago identified this coward as a serious and violent threat to young girls and failed to imprison him and monitor him for the rest of his life. I am angry at the so-called experts who repeatedly tell us that cowards like him, violent predators who target children, can be rehabilitated when all of us with, a sense, with, a, with an ounce of common sense know that our children are not safe and that these cowards pose an untenable risk to our kids. I am not alone in questioning the justice in a justice system that gives by right a convicted murderer and rapist unlimited access to a phone. Are we to accept the argument that it is cruel and unusual punishment to limit this freedom after he has so ruthlessly forever taken it from his victims? You were physically large enough to damage Chelsea's body, but you did not touch her soul. Her powerful spirit lives on, and she is guiding Kelly, Tyler, and me and thousands of other good people to eliminate the likes of you from our society. Yeah. It's time for you to go to your permanent cage. You're irrelevant to the people of good and will. And I encourage this community, including these in the media, to treat you as such by working to erase your name forever from our collective consciousness. I mean this quite literally. You can go straight to hell. And I pray every night that God shows you no mercy. I love you, Chelsea. I love you, Tyler. I love you, Kelly.